I'm Meredith Blackwell, and I'm going to interview Alf Fain, and he is from Norway, uh, Denmark, Denmark, Denmark. <laughs> I last saw him in Thailand, and so that must have been four years ago at the International Mycological Congress there. It would have been the 10th one. So we're going to talk for a little bit. Okay, where did you grow up? I grew up in Denmark. I'm okay. born at Brett Dane. And never left? Never left. Never left in my for a long time. I, in my professional life, I've had a small sabbatical, but I was born and bred in Denmark mm -hmm. by Danish parents. Went to school in Denmark, public schools in Denmark, high schools in Denmark, university in Denmark, and made my bachelor, master's, and PhD at the Technical University in Denmark. Okay, is that on an island? That's How on the island uh, where Copenhagen is located. Okay. It's uh, called Sjælland in Danish, or Sealand in, in English. Yeah. And that's actually where I live today. I mean, on this island, I live, I live 60 kilometers north of Copenhagen City. Okay. When, when I was at LSU, there was a man from there who worked with nematodes, uh, nematode trapping fungi, to try to kill nematodes in cattle farms. Yeah. Did you know him? No, I didn't actually. I yeah. did not know him. It's been quite a while ago. Was, yeah. yeah. So, when, after you got your degree, what did you do? Well, I got the, the degree in, uh, as a Master of Science, actually in, within mycology, because I was uh, studying a chemical engineer. That was what it was called at that time. I think today it would be a biotechnologist or something okay. like that. Mm -hmm. And I had courses with uh, my former supervisor, Ole Filkenborg, who was a food microbiologist, but working with filamentous fungi. Wow. So that really triggered me. It's not a long time story that, that I would, from a mycological orientated family, mm -hmm. it simply came to me during my studies at the university. Okay. So you're an accidental mycologist. You could call it that. Me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so then you got your first job. I did, uh, yeah. I mean, the Danish system is, is, is uh, quite simple and straightforward, so I simply got my first position actually as a, as a PhD student, it would be mm -hmm. today, shortly after my degree as a, as master, in, with a master of science in, in filamentous fungi and chemotaxonomy. Oh. So that was the, the driver at the, that time at, the uni at our university, that to use chemical profiling for mm -hmm. taxonomy of molds in food and feed. Did you do uh, chromatography or? We did chromatography. We started, mm -hmm. I mean, those were the days. I mean, it's way back in time. Yeah. So it was thin layer chromatography, glass plates, uh, even homemade glass plates at those times, <laughs> and, and uh, made chrom chromatography. Later on, it developed together with high mm -hmm. uh, performance liquid chromatography uh, mm -hmm. and mass spec uh, at, at recently. So. so have you changed techniques? I've changed a lot of techniques because actually I've changed the the uh, my entire career has changed recently, but over the I mean those days at the Technical University, it it changed as the technique or technology developed uh, together with, with the rest of the mycology so-called mycology group those, at those days, and we decided quite early that all these molecular techniques that was popping up in the 80s 90s around 2000 mm -hmm. that would not be us. We better stick to our chemical background and then collaborate with people doing molecular work. Yeah. And, and so who do you collaborate with? So, so we, we collaborate mainly internationally, with, with especially a lot with the uh, former CBS, I mean Westerdijk Institute in, in the Netherlands. Yeah. That was really our main collaborator. But as uh, personally I had an interest in Fusarium, so that was a very international forum, so that means I had a lot of work together with the, the Penn State people, uh, Toby Toussaint and uh, Paul Nelson, and uh, also the Australian Lester Burgess and Wally Marasis from South Africa. Okay. And of course the European school, so to speak, with Hel Helga Nienberg in Berlin. Do you continue to work with the Penn State people? I continue to, to, to work with the Penn State people. With Geyser? With, Geyser, with David Geyser, yeah, I yeah. meet him. Now and then, and we have. He's have, here. He's, he's here. Yeah, I've already spoken to him. So, yeah. so, so the Fusarium world is, is is a very international world with a lot of collaborations on and off, and, and uh, 
that has been been the driver throughout my my career, the majority of my career. Okay, and what about the indoor air? The indoor air—that's something new, actually, because um, what happened is that um, you know at un government and universities, the economy is not always that yeah. good. So I was uh, asked to leave the Technical University <laughs> two years ago mm -hmm. in 2016, and uh, then I spent time to figure out what to do within my college because that's what I would like to continue. Yeah. And uh, thanks to a network globally and national network, suddenly they called back and said, well, we have a position here, or we can make a position at another university in Copenhagen area within the Danish Building Research Institute because they have been working with indoor air quality, um, including fungi, for, for quite some time, but it has been a little down at the, due to staffing, but now they wanted to improve it. And I said, yes, I'm ready. Why not? I mean, yeah, that's great. Yeah, so now my position has changed, um, my duties has changed, my task has changed from being what you would call a taxonomist-like thing to be more applied. So that means to disseminate mycological information to building instructors, building inspectors, architects, governmental bodies, and also Mr. and Mrs. Denmark, when they call in on our moldy phone, we have a hotline service. You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. You try to dial, if you figure out the time zones, land code 45 for Denmark, 99, 40, 22, 22, and you'll get the moldy phone. Make sure you get this. And <laughs> yeah. what is the moldy phone? The moldy, the moldy phone is a hotline where everybody can call in and ask the, bring up their questions. About I have, mold? About mold in buildings. Well, we do not consultancy work because mm -hmm. we are governmental university lab, mm -hmm. but we can uh, tell people that, oh, here's a list of consultants, please use that or see if there's anyone <laughs> near your neighborhood you can use or here's some lawyers, here's some medical doctors or whatever. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So we have a lot of funny stories, well, funny stories, you're laughing, that's nice. The moldy phone, I love it. <laughs> yeah, the moldy phone, yeah. Um, so, so we have a lot of funny stories from, from people that really have troubles, but of course also some very um, sad stories of people that really are sick. Yeah. I mean, there's, of course, people that are, let's call it more um, psychological sick of mold in buildings, but there's also people that I believe really are sick. Yeah. As we discussed, uh, I've heard discussed a lot with, with your colleague, Joan Bennett, yeah. about this, and, and I'm quite sure that she's right that there's something, sick building syndrome exists. Yeah, I had uh, friends in Baton Rouge, and they, were, they couldn't sleep in their house anymore. They, yeah. had, they had to move out. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, after one of the hurricanes, I had a tree fall through my roof. Yeah. And we fixed the roof, but I didn't realize that I had mold in closets no. that I hadn't seen. Yeah. And, and I was fine, yeah. as far as I know. Yeah, but, that, that's, so it affects uh, people differently. It I affects think. people a lot, and, and mm -hmm. so so actually, I see even I had to this what's called dramatic change in my in my career. Yeah. I see now as a mission. It's a, I know it's maybe a little fluffy well, word. It's, good, it's a mission to 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 help other mm -hmm. people and to to make all these new guidelines to make it good. Um, methods for, for sampling, for identification, and, and being a taxonomist, I understand what all our colleagues here at this meeting, what they tell. I mean, with all the phylogenetics and the hundreds and hundreds or thousands and thousands of new species popping up. But the big question is, what do they do out there to mm -hmm. us or to the buildings? And that's really a challenge. I think. And that's sort of what Lynn Bobby talked about this morning, uh, you yeah. know, to find out what's going on. What's going on? Identify, yeah. make this. And, and I see, yeah. I mean, uh, being part of the game for, for many, many years, I, even I said that we did not do, or I didn't do myself sequencing. But now I feel that it is as if it has, this area has moved into, let's call it the next phase, mm -hmm. that while sequencing, everybody can do a sequence. I mean, you just do it. Send it off. So send it off, and it, it comes back. But the next step will be functionality, ecology, as we heard Tom Brown said in one yeah. of the plenary. I really, I mean, it was excellent. And I think that's coming up. 
I've just been waiting for that. That we, well, there's always gene prediction, or there's been gene predictions, and now they know they code for this and that. But the next thing will be, how does these organisms work, function out there? And I think that's really missing. And we miss people that are, let's call it biologists, working with the organism. Organism knowledge is missing. There's so many that knows these four letters, A, C, T, G, and G, but I mean, the biology is missing. So how many people work in your lab? In, in, in my lab, well, there's actually only me as a mycologist. Oh, okay. Uh, but the good thing is that uh, being in a new place, I know the people that are working two floors below, uh -huh. they are fungal biotechnologists. So my ID cards work, I can sneak into their labs. <laughs> so you collaborate? I collaborate a lot. Yeah. And, and the university, Old Boy University, where I am now, they really encourage us to work, I mean, between departments. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, is Brigitte downstairs? No, Brigitte is located, still located at okay. the Technical University, okay. yeah, together with, with Jens Friesbach, which okay. is uh, about 10 miles from where I am. Is Friesbach still working? Friesbach yeah. is still working, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, someone was trying to find him the other day, and yeah. I, I used he, that he's, a, he's around. Yeah. He's around. I'll, I'll catch him. <laughs> anyway. So, um, anyway. What do you plan to do? Do you plan to go on working a long time? Or? Well, being 61, I won't work forever. Do whatever it does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, as long as, as, uh, as I'm happy to go to work, as long as there's projects and the uh, department, university wants me to work, I'll, I'll be working. Do you have an age? Limit no, not no. anymore. Yeah, not, we don't either. No. As long as you can, I wouldn't say as long as you can stand on your feet, but <laughs> as long as you perform. Thank you. As long as you perform. I mean, yeah, and then they're happy. And, and performance, that's uh, doing teaching, uh, writing papers, attracting money, looking for funding and activities, then you can keep on working. That's good. And I, at my department, there's people that have been on retirement for many, many years and they're still popping in a couple of days a week. So, so, but I will not say that I'll do that forever, yeah. because I know that having through this career, dramatic change in career, that you never know how you will respond when you actually see it. Yeah. So, 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 but uh, why not? I love, I love my college. I mean, yeah. I even also love. I mean, I see you, my seat, my college. I mean, through forest, my college. Even I have to. Now the camera is rolling. I have to tell you a little secret. Tell me. <laughs> When I was a kid, I had an aunt who were really, she had no kids. And she was so f afraid that all her nephews and nieces should die of eating fly agaric. So when I was a kid, I was scared to death by fly agaric. Even as a grown up, I had to force myself to pick up a fly agaric each fall and simply just touch it. Which was silly, because in my daily life, I worked with fungi that were much more toxic. Even when my kids grew up, we were, they were running in the forest, and they, it, they really loved if they could say, Dad, look there at the right. And suddenly, it just stuck me. I, my, my heart nearly stopped beating. They were teasing you. They were teasing me. But now I, it's OK. But I have to admit that I still think of my family member that really gave me this um, fear in life, so to speak, for the flyer Garrick. I love these flyer Garrick now, but still I force myself each year to just pick up one. <laughs> it's a wonder that you ever became a mycologist. Yeah, it is, <laughs> yes, yes, because I'm not out of mycological background yeah. in my family. Mm -hmm. my, my dad was an airline captain <laughs> and uh, my mom was, uh, was a teacher in, in public school. So, so uh, maybe that kind of yeah, so, led you that way. Yeah. Well, I, uh, yeah, it's funny. I never noticed a fungus until I was in, in graduate school. No. Never no. saw one, don't remember it. No, I mean, when Certainly I... Certainly no fire garrets. When, when, I, when I started <coughs> to, to study at the Technical University, as I said, it was to become a chemical engineer. And that was due to a, um, a friend of my mom that, that started there as a, as a late uh, education system and said, why not do that? Because that was back in the 70s. I mean, being a wild uh, teenager, 
thingy and uh, with long hair to my shoulders and Whoa. <laughs> yeah, no pictures. I have no pictures unfortunately. No. Well, at least I can may find one. Send it to you. Yeah, please. I would love uh, to see that. So, so it was really, as I said, a coincidence that, that during I let's call it I matured during my studies <laughs> and and ran into these guys, uh, Jens Freiswell and Ole Fildenborg, who actually did them food my quality thing, and suddenly I just saw something there. Otherwise, it, it, I mean, but that's the way it is in life, and I like that. It's been wonderful. I love my college. I love my college. Me too. And I love being at meetings, and I love meeting you and all the other gang around here. No, it's a good meeting, but they're yeah. all good. Yeah. All good. So, well, thank you very much. And thank you so much, Meredith. It's been a pleasure.